So you may have guessed it, yep, we have a news segment. Hello YouTube world, my name is KD, welcome if you're new around here, but if you're not new, welcome back love. So, I hope you're ready to get angry, because every single time I do one of these news type videos, I get myself very annoyed and angry at what I'm reading. So, brace yourself, we have a couple of news articles I just wanted to touch upon, nothing major that has happened but they're within the last couple of months so it's really recent for what's been happening so for those of you who may be new around here hi my name is katie i used to screen share the information that i'm going to tell you about with the articles but youtube doesn't like that very much so what i do now is i talk about it with saying certain words like flower um instead of the c word ca word right um and so please forgive me if you don't understand what I'm saying. So it's trying, I'm trying to you know, help you right now. But all of the articles that I do talk about will hopefully be linked in the description as long as I'm okay to do so with that as well. Right, so getting into it, the first one comes from The Guardian. And this is from Sunday the 11th of February this year, 2024. And the title is wonder drug is the uk ready for the green rush of medicinal flower and there's a picture of a man in a little hazmat suit with a hairnet and everything tending to some crop which doesn't look great if i'm gonna be honest um you'll have to check the article out after this and let me know what do you think i don't know there's like lots of yellow and doesn't look like it's healthy just saying anyway this article is talking about how there has been a little bit of a movement so to speak within the medical flower whole community and everything basically because there has now been 60 countries that have legalized decriminalized flower so obviously we were one of these countries that legalized it for medicinal purposes only in november 2018. the article says here um in the us medicinal flower is a multi-billion dollar industry the Guardian go behind scenes at one of Britain's top secret growing facilities and meet with the experts who believe it's high time that its potential was harnessed in the UK too. So it goes on to say you might not have noticed but Britain is in the midst of a flower revolution. Uh, this one plant its proponents say that it has the potential to reshape modern medicine. So this is stuff we already know right? We already know this as patients and horticulturalists who have used this medicine for many, many years. We already know this, but it's really nice to now start to hear all these years later, what we've been fucking saying is actually looked into by scientists and doctors. It, I digress. It's happening quickly and quietly with scientists and doctors ushering in a new era of high tech flower power. Now, I didn't put flower power. They did. As of today, over 60 countries have been legalized in some form, like I said. This is the part where I don't think they've got it right. They go on to say some 30,000 of us have already been prescribed flower for conditions ranging from arthritis to epilepsy, anxiety to multiple sclerosis. The latter part of that is true. However, 30,000, where are you getting your research from? Because I'm telling you now, triple that figure. All right, triple that. It's over a hundred thousand patients, and this is privately, right? This is over a hundred thousand people, just like yourself, that are listening to me right now, that are paying privately for this medicine. So I don't know where the fuck they got thirty thousand from, but they need to up that. They go on to mention Cure Relief Clinic, which I won't talk about, but I did want to touch upon this here. So it goes down, and we're going to talk about the um, facility now that the Guardian went into only going to talk about it a small part, but I just, I, th I thought this was interesting. So obviously they went into this new facility that's highly, highly top secret. And it says that there are more than 200 CCTV cameras across Celadon, which is what the place is called, Celadon. Celadon's 100,000 square foot state-of-the-art flower growing facility. Sky-high fencing, airlock doors, and number plate recognition get this to visit 
an NDA must be signed to ensure that no details emerge of its top secret location. Hey, yo, what? <laughs> Y'all be signing an NDA to go into here, like, this is serious, right? But um, it says its vast buildings have no exterior signage or branding, ensuring anonymity. This is the part that made me chuckle, though. The only slight giveaway the company's co-founder Paul Allen accepts is the stench of it wafting out across an otherwise unassuming grey industrial estate. A high-tech filtration system is due to be installed imminently. Oh, mate, I cracked up when I heard that, like the waft. I was like, if I lived in that town, wherever you are, you could waft it over my way, no problem at all. If I was one of your patients and it smelled great, that was just, just fine by me. The article is quite an in-depth, lengthy one. It goes on to speak about Hannah Deacon and her child Alfie, which arguably was the first case to kind of bring this to the attention of, of everybody. I believe, uh, don't quote me, but I believe this was the case where she had to go over to Amsterdam to go and get the medicine and bring it back. And there was a whole debacle, obviously, about her bringing it into a country that it obviously wasn't legalised. Um, so I think that she was the lady that kind of pioneered this um, and she still is a huge advocate for it. Her name does get mentioned in another article later. So like I said, I will link to the whole article if you would like to go through it. It is quite a lengthy read, but if you're bored and you want to read something that you don't know too much about, then go ahead. Right, so the second article is dated the 8th of April 2024. So not too long ago, and this one is Germany decriminalizes why the UK should consider doing the same. So it's interesting that when I was doing my research on this, the two top articles that came up were talking about this and basically that the UK should be doing more about this, which is really interesting because in contrast to the last news video that we did, we had a patient be arrested. Um, you know, it's not all gravy. Obviously, there are some things in here that do get me quite annoyed and it probably will get you annoyed too when we get there. But I just want to make it clear that it looks as though there is some small wave of talk like something is happening there is definitely something more that is happening this year it seems than any other kind of year or maybe it's led up to this i don't know um but yeah anyway talking about this article this is basically going over the German law and how they have decriminalised it, basically. And it says, on the other hand, the UK, um, unlike other Western countries, including Malta and Canada, we have only opened up for medicinal purposes. However, this is the part of the article that I thought was interesting that I wanted to share with you guys. Um, and it's basically this section here, if you go down, it says flower and mental health. And the article goes on to say there is an extensive research exploring the relationship between cannabis. Oh, don't know if I'm going to. I've only said that once. <laughs> Hopefully it's allowed. If, if I've muted it, you know why, right? And mental health problems such as psychosis. However, no casual link has been established because to run such studies would be unethical. Right? Which is, we can all agree with that, right? Though... There is a significant association between flower and psychosis. The evidence suggests that some people may be more vulnerable than others to developing psychosis through flower use. I agree with this. Let me know in the comments right now. Pause the video after I've said this and then, you know, I mean, get your fucking thoughts out and then come back to the video. I agree with this, okay? I personally think that if you are a person that has tendencies or you have in you some form of psychosis or schizophrenia or any psychological issue, I do believe that this, you being a patient or even just ingesting it, could bring on the psychosis that you already have. OK, so I want to make this very, very clear because there were some people like back in the day with the whole war on drugs and everything like that, that would basically say that it turns you schizophrenic. OK, I am 
old enough to remember right hands up if you remember basically people being like well it's going to kill your brain cells and you're going to turn into a schizo however while there is some truth in that statement i do not believe that that is a blanket statement for the pretty much 99 percent of majority of people that use this as a medicine and this is one of the big reasons i think why when you go to apply for a medical prescription they will turn you down if you have a history of psychosis they will do that and i'm glad that they have because there's obviously some sort of link that they're finding with this right but and it's a big fucking but although these health concerns are shared by some organizations in germany this has not prevented the policy reform okay so really interesting that germany have gone ahead and done this even though that they are sharing this information but again another but it even goes on to say at the bottom here flower users who experience psychosis are very few when compared to the total number used by people one study estimated that to avoid one person developing psychosis up to 10,000 men and 29,000 women aged 20 to 24 would need to be prevented from using the flower the risk to mental health associated with flower then is relatively low so this could be why we're starting to see some sort of noise because the last part of this which i wanted to share with you is it, it's titled alcohol and tobacco regulated but riskier and i've been saying this for so many years and i'm sure so so many of you have been saying this as well but it just puts it perfectly in this little sentence unlike flour alcohol is regulated in the uk although there are restrictions on its use these have been loosened in recent years as with flour, there are risks to mental health as a consequence of using alcohol. The risk of developing depression among heavy alcohol use is significant. One in two, one in two people will experience depression with alcohol. So despite alcohol being regulated or legal, the risks to a person's mental health are greater than those posed by flour. we fucking know this right we fucking know this we've known it for years so hopefully these sort of articles coming out recently is hopefully gonna start to keep the noise going do you know what i mean like but passion over because there's something here that was published on the 30th of april Medical flower campaigners say current rules, this is by Euro News Health, by the way, and the last one was by another European news. So this one here, medical flower campaigners say current rules mean hardly anyone is eligible for free treatment, which we know, right? Some patients in the UK say they are denied access to medical flower by the country's National Health Service, NHS. Hertfordshire resident Fallon Levy, she's 30, 30, 30 years old. She can now sit at a table and hold a pen thanks to flower-based medicines that she takes to treat a rare form of epilepsy. Now, this is where it gets me angry because I'm a very empathetic person, right? So when I sat there and read that this person who's five years younger than me can now sit at a table and hold a fucking pen without having extreme seizures or it hurting her to be in debilitating pain to hold a fucking pen right do you think these people at the top that are doing all of the pulling the strings and everything like that do you think they have any problem sitting down and holding a pen they don't do they no so how could they possibly put themselves in this person's shoes they are so far fucking detached from reality of what people go through because they don't sell themselves don't go through it because life's fucking perfect for you right you may be rich and you may have power but i hope you got your health i hope you got enough money to pay for your health because let's be honest right let's say that one of the top government officials one of their wives or children or god forbid you know anything in their family 
got some sort of disease or condition where they were able to treat with medical flour. Do you think they're going to pay privately? Or do you think they're going to get it in the chest? I think I know what the answer is. And unfortunately, because they are so healthy, they're so powerful, they're so rich, they have no fucking empathy, they cannot put themselves in the shoes of this 30-year-old lady who can't even hold a pen without it being extreme. Let's just say that I believe in karma and I do hope that life isn't just all that pretty for these people who can't get down on their empathy ladder. Sociopaths. They have no feeling. They cannot put themselves in these people's shoes. So this really fucks me off. This poor person, right, used to have up to 200 seizures a month up to 200 seizures a month but she can go out now and she can live life and she can go for a meal she can go to the cinema and she can go bowling and she can go dancing but it comes at a price doesn't it yep and it comes at hefty 2000 a month and we all know exactly that's how much it costs because how much are the oils how much are the vapes more than the flour and these people that have the seizures have to have the vapes and the oils and things like that, right? So, of course, it's costing a stupid amount of money. They've had to sell their fucking house. After six years, she's had to sell her home to find the funds. Again, so far attached. They have no idea what that's like, do they? No fucking clue. <sighs> so there are so many people that are struggling to pay for their medicine. Where the fuck is the UK? What are we doing to help these people? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Nope. Nope. But I'm going to end on a positive note because this is the last thing that I would like to share with you. And I was very kindly invited by my clinic, which is Alternaleaf, up to London to film for some Instagram and YouTube and basically social media exposure about medical and how it treats people. So we all know there's still a lot of people out there that are on the Amanars and I'm you know not sure, not sure. These are incredibly cinematic, very well edited portions of an interview that each one of us went up to London to do. So, Alternally for UK, you can see here, this is me, obviously. Um, the angle is so unflattering, but, you know, we, we, it doesn't matter about that. It doesn't matter what I look like. It's about the content uh, and context of the journey and the story. Although there is some people over on Reddit that aren't happy with the way I look and don't think that I'd be a great advocate, just purely based on my looks. But it's okay. It's okay. I'm not trying to go out there and uh, speak to doctors and scientists. So calm down, honey. Calm down. But these are the great stories. Really, really powerful. Um, Sarah, I actually met when I went up to London. She was leaving just as I was sort of going. So she's got a really, really powerful story. And I have listened to all of them, even though it doesn't show that I have. But I just wanted to say thank you again, really, for the opportunity to come and do this. And hopefully... If you have anybody like who is on the fence about this or doesn't know about it and you know that they could actually benefit from something like Medical Flower, send them these videos, send them to Alternally. If you know, go ahead and subscribe. I've subscribed, you know, watch my story here, watch the others and above all else, yeah, share it. If you find that one of these stories might actually help somebody in your older generation um, because Sarah's journey, I personally was like, oh my God, if I weren't a patient, I'd have been sold, mate. Like, I'm not even joking, Sarah. I don't think she watches my videos, but she did a blinding job because I was like, oh my God, if I, if I wasn't already a patient and I was going through pain, I would definitely try what she said to try. So yeah, I just wanted to show my respect and shout out all these people, Sarah, Jardine and Lawrence and Steve, who went up to do the same thing that I did. Um, and that's about it. I didn't want this video to get too long, but hey, it's a news video and I felt that it's an important one to share.
So, if you have enjoyed this and you've got value out of it, please feel free to like the video, send it out to YouTube, and if you like this sort of content, obviously I will do it again in the future. Much appreciated. I have some new members as well, so thank you, thank you, thank you. You are on the end of the video. And above all else, hit subscribe if you haven't already. Why have you got to the end of this video and you haven't subscribed already? Like, come on, you must, you must enjoy it, right? I love you guys. Take care of yourselves, take care of each other, and I will see you next week.